Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. So, yesterday we painted the green station on the Ravenglass desk out in our railway. Um, and then from that, I actually did uh, ignore the crinkle on there, it's just from the film. Um, I actually did an acrylic painting. Um, and then I did another view from that station uh, of the uh, bridge on the other side and kind of the drain going into the distance. Quite like those. Um, yeah, they're available on the website, which is josephtravis.com. Uh, go into the shop, blah, blah, blah. Uh, right, so I've put my pen down. Uh, 2377. Hi. So we're pointing, uh, pointing, we're painting a little bit on the Raven Glass and Eskdale Railway. Um, this is a. This is a house. That uh, is alongside it, and there's like a little station, but I don't think they use the station at the moment. But there is technically a stopping point there. Um, actually, there is. A, there's a station name. I just like I say they don't use a lot of the stations now, so I don't know what station it is. Um, so anyway, let's go. Um, you can't, on Street View you can't get any closer than this because it's a private road down to the house and to the station and uh, yeah. so Yeah, I'm enjoying painting this. Um, I think it's uh, been quite enjoyable. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. It's been quite enjoyable to do. It's been a bit late getting here this morning. Um, I've uploaded those to my website and done some social media posts. And yeah, I've just. My youngest has been off school this week. Well, pains. Once off school because he's got permission to be off school. Um, because the rest of his class have gone on a school trip. And him being autistic and diabetic. <laughs> I just find him hard work and it's, it can be, it can be quite Personality. 
so it's different to me. Um, I'm quiet and retiring and he's of a boisterous at times. Wait, is this this little copse of trees? Pine trees here. You can see that the hill itself is more like kind of that. And the trees kind of fill in that void and make it look a bit sort of in that spot. But anyway. Let's, 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 let's. Okay, most of this is trees. All right. And I don't know. I've been quite stressed recently. It's there's a lot to do. There's a lot I said I'll do and I'm just falling behind. Not that I've said I'll do stuff to I mean I've got little bits that like New shop in Blackpool. Uh, I'm supplying them with a bunch of work, but most of it's not work that I've kind of agreed to, so it's just me saying I'll do something to me. Uh, with no real deadlines, no real direction. Just Becoming overwhelmed because I've sat pointless projects that are never going to go anywhere. Um, yeah, I. My brain's hard work. Let's put it that way. It's kind of a bridge there, but you can't really see it. It's like there's this kind of mental battle at the moment between kind of um, between kind of doing the acrylic paintings every day and writing a book that no one's asked for. <laughs> so yeah, just doing it because because. Yeah, it's, it's kind of these battles that we put ourselves through, same. And there's no one looking for these things or waiting for these things, I guess. It is part of my brain's way of 
try to find kind of a meaning and a purpose and Yeah, so I need to find out the name of the station. Which I will. Because um, I chose this place yesterday because you can see it as you cross the... A5955. Um, like I say, it doesn't have a station name. On the map. Um. You know, you put <sighs> because I'm not making that much money at the moment, it's it has been about looking for... I do spend a lot of time looking for Project Upward. I don't think these books necessarily will, but... It's one of those that it would be a nice project to get out into the world, especially talking about... One about selecting music, the other one about how to use art to deal with kind of mental health and part of me is afraid to even say what that second book is about because the first book selective mutism this uh, book i'm writing there's only me that can write it i mean there are other people who suffer from selective mutism I mean, you know, it's not like I've got a publisher waiting for... for a manuscript or anything, I'm just... Just writing for the sake of... Uh... See, what I've done... <laughs> Proportionally, that one's slightly too big for that I mean yeah there'd be some sort of foreshortening but it's not enough to make up and I knew I'd do it and for the acrylic painting I can just you know I can just paint it down a little bit and you know this building's higher and all sorts of it's See, here's the thing, for this channel, and it just stressed me out at times, I feel like what I should be sharing is like advice on how to get your business to work, and, you know, how to improve a painting and things. And part of the problem is, when it comes to improving, really the only way you can improve is to I guess the main question that a lot of people have when they're asking about improving is all of them are asking how to start. The only way to start is to start. Like I said, although I'm a qualified art teacher, To me, that doesn't really mean a lot. Um, 
because uh, there was no real kind of well of course I did there was no real art specific training um, and the place where I did my teacher training they weren't really We weren't teaching kids how to draw. Basically, you would have a class and um, they'd have an assignment. And let's say it was the, there's two sorts of courses there was A levels or B techs. Um, a levels are quite formal, there's an exam and blah blah. Oh, there's a coursework exam and a lot of the kids who were doing that just used it as a filler qualification so they were doing like you know maths and science and just wanted something else to help them get to university but those kids you would be advising them not how to draw, but kind of what to draw to their portfolio for their sketchbook because it was about developing from point A to point B. And you'd advise them on that. Uh, the BTEC students, it was kind of the same thing. It was about going from point A to point B, but through a specific, very specific channel of things they had to cover. So, um, you would, every lesson, you would have like two students and so you had to talk to them and make sure that they were doing what they were supposed to be doing and advise them on what you wanted to do next. So, this is good, blah, blah, blah. You could improve this by doing this, that, and the other. You know, not even the quality of the drawing, just what to draw. Like, oh yeah, uh, I think you could improve where you're going next by painting this particular thing. Or, yeah, this painting's good, but um, to show where you come from, you need to add this element back into it. It, it wasn't really teaching art, it was... It was more about making sure the kids all got a high grade. So you just tell them what to do. And I didn't enjoy it. And in a lot of ways the kids didn't enjoy it either. But it's what they were offered. If you were there, that's what you did. Um, if you didn't do what you were told, you, you would be told off. They forced a lot of kids out because they wouldn't do exactly what, they, you know, as a teacher, you would tell them to do this. If you don't do this, you will no longer be on this course. And, you know, for me, it wasn't how, it wasn't how I saw art. It wasn't how, a lot of these people were kids, you know, they were 16, 17, 18. And it was a little bit better at the, when I went to private education, but but the kids a lot of the time there because they were paying a lot, they wanted that kind of level of being told what to do you know you need to do x y and z to get the grade which they would have got if they'd gone to this the other school they taught at which was a free school mind the other one the private education one was massively expensive um, like I say
So what would end up happening was it would be me that would be telling the kids at the private school how to... Because you would, yeah, at the, at the sixth form I taught at, you were just telling the kids how to get the grade that they wanted and that they needed to go to the next stage. So it's quite nice, really. Um, and, yeah. In the, at the end of the day, if they wanted to do art at university, what we used to do is tell them to go to the other local college where I am currently an artist in residence and to do a year there and kind of before they moved over to university to study art so that they can actually learn to actually paint and actually draw because the other college they still help them with all these things to help them get the grade but they actually teach them to draw they teach them to They have like life drawing classes, um, things like that. They have actual classes that you need to get better. Um, but like I say, I've never taught them. So, but a lot of getting better is just keep going and producing you know, crappy, crappy drawings as well as good drawings. A lot of drawings really will come down to your personal preference. Whereas I like this, so I might like one of the ones I've really hated over the last, you know, how long. Um, yeah, it's. So the only way to get good is to do it. You know, I have no natural talent for this, I have no natural skill. This is all just. Hours and hours and hours and hours. Frustrating myself and kicking my ass over and over again. Um, there's more I need to learn, I know that. But you learn by doing. And when there's a bit I'm weak on, what I know I need to do is I need to go out and do that thing. Like. Um, you know, if I want to represent these textures on this building here, and you know, I'm going to need to actually go out there and kind of see these things in real life too. And that's the hard part. I know there's bits I'm not good enough at because I don't draw from life. I draw from photographs a lot because I have a lot of health. Um, in the past, I have drawn a little bit more from life because my health problems weren't so overwhelming. And my kids were little and went to school. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's. So, yeah, the, I, I am kind of writing a book about how to start and how to keep going and how to kill that perfectionism which is something i really struggled with for a long time um, like i say the thing that killed perfectionism for me wasn't uh, because i couldn't paint all the time because i was just so concerned with how bad i was that keeping going was hard um, whereas now i can keep going even if i know it's truly terrible um, because it's just part of the process. Uh, ceramics really teaches you that. You've got to throw hundreds and hundreds of pieces to be any good. Um, and it's the same with painting. Um, it's in some ways cheaper just to paint than it is to make pottery. It, it's just, you know, if a piece of clay goes wrong, you can think, you think well, well, you can just recycle that and keep going. Um, whereas now I just use every ounce of paper, and if it goes wrong, you forget it, you know. Particularly bad painting. What? Yeah. Oh. 
I'll find a bad paint in there. Some of these aren't as bad as I remember them, like that one. They can't be bad. You know, just keep going. Not everyone makes a good painting all the time. Um, I'd say of the paintings I do, like one in ten are excellent, one in ten are just utterly terrible. You know, other end, you know, best of the best, um, the best thing I've done, the worst thing I've done. One in ten for each of those. You know, for four in ten, you'd probably get, ugh, and, you know, either side of it's all right. Um, yeah, it's just keep it going. Um, I've ordered some different paint supplies, and we could try those out on camera at some point when they come. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, instead of waffling on. I'm going to go. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you've stayed this far, make sure you give a like. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you.